power relay to directly power uh, your uh, uh, recirculation pumps. Here is an example uh, of uh, a control system. And uh, uh, like I was saying before, uh, um, here we have uh, two different uh, mix station. And uh, there is one for uh, the radian ceiling and one for the radian floor. Why do we want to have a uh, radian ceiling and radian floor to different temperatures? Well, uh, the, the, the answer is very uh, simple. It all depends on the thermal mass. So uh, on the ceiling, the, there is less thermal mass, so then we can activate and uh, deactivate uh, the ceiling very quick. We can change uh, the temperature. We can react very fast to any change, including the dew point. So if we are doing ceiling uh, uh, radiant cooling, then uh, we definitely want to go more aggressive than we do on the floor, because if we do something on the floor and then we try to be aggressive, and we, let's say, we walk into a room, the floor is cold, there are many people, and uh, the humidity goes up, and we can do a disaster, it can be like condensation. So we like to keep them to di two different uh, uh, hydronic uh, loop, uh, two different logics, two different temperature. So here is uh, uh, the, <coughs> the heating and cooling source. It's, uh, it's a heat pump with a small buffer tank to different temperature, and then in this case we have a boiler as a, as a heating backup for the, for the heat pump, but also with this diverting valve to do the domestic tap water. And here there is a, a pump for a recirculation, and uh, as you can see in the center is the M box that will be controlling all these uh, devices, zero ten volt uh, uh, to control the mixing valve, at actuation of the pump, uh, and then we will be controlling the heat pump uh, via Modbus, so we will communicate with the, with the heat pump. On this side, uh, there is a Modbus line that will uh, uh, connect uh, what we call the uh, ATU. Uh, those are uh, uh, air treatment unit. Those unit, uh, uh, this project is for a house uh, with two floor and 11 zones with both radium ceiling and radium floor and we put one uni unit uh, uh, per floor. So uh, two different uh, air treatment unit, uh, one per floor. We also added uh, a fan coil in the master bedroom uh, that we control with the analog output, zero ten volt, to modulate uh, the speed of the fan coil based on uh, uh, how far we are uh, from the dew point. And then there is also a fan coil in the, in the living room. This is just to give you an idea of uh, how the uh, wiring diagram will look like. Uh, so here is all the uh, temperature input. There will be a sensor for measuring the supply and the return temperature uh, on the ceiling, supply return temperature on the floor, temperature on the buffer tank, domestic uh, hot water temperature. Here is the boiler and the heat pump, uh, and then uh, uh, all the activation for uh, the circulating pumps, uh, the mixing valve, the fan coil. Uh, the terminal, uh, uh, the input-output terminal are based on these uh, WAGO terminal blocks uh, are pretty common in uh, uh, industrial uh, application and uh, as I like to, s to say, bad connection are source of almost uh, half of the uh, system failure, so uh, we really wanted to invest in a very good uh, and simple uh, uh, connection system, uh, industrial grade. Okay, connectivity. So uh, the M box uh, is uh, typically connected to internet uh, through an Ethernet cable that will go from your uh, home router uh, to the box. So it will be always online, uh, and you can see it through the app. Uh, however, um, there is a, a, a Wi-Fi connection, and uh, this can be useful uh, uh, during construction. So let's say you need to start up the system, uh, and uh, the house doesn't have. Uh, the uh, internet uh, uh, already established, so you can connect through Wi-Fi and, and control the system. And there is also a Bluetooth, Bluetooth uh, low energy uh, port, so you can go with your phone and control the system locally with the, with the Bluetooth. Uh, as an option to have a wired uh, control uh, uh, display, there is a, a, a industrial grade uh, display that uh, can be installed next to the M box in the mechanical room for uh, easy service and and uh, and for the startup. 
Okay, so let's go a little bit more uh, in the details about uh, uh, the control uh, strategy. So uh, one of the most critical uh, uh, items to control uh, with our philosophy is the buffer tank. Why is it center of the system? Uh, this is because having like a system approach, we, we decide, so the, the computer will receive all this information and elaborate this information uh, from the different room and as a, as a consequence we will need to dictate what will be the supply temperature, let's say in the ceiling or in the, in the floor or for the fan coil and so we will need to dictate uh, the temperature uh, in the buffer tank. Uh, the buffer tank then will dictate the temperature, will request the right temperature to the heat pump or to the boiler. And so there are uh, different way to control the buffer tank temperature, fixed temperature, so you keep the temperature uh, at uh, 10 degrees and, uh, and do cooling. Uh, or you have a four pipe system, 10 degrees and 40 degrees and uh, you do heating and cooling. Uh, but uh, uh, the way that I like to control the buffer tank is with modulated temperature. So this will allow you to optimize uh, your heat pump performance and uh, the modulation uh, is based on uh, internal heating and cooling load. So basically, we try to estimate what the real loads are in every single room, and then that will dictate uh, the real temperature that we need uh, uh, in the buffer tank. There is also an outdoor reset uh, uh, function that is like a linear function based on uh, uh, set point and, uh, and uh, outdoor temperature. So the set point based on the outdoor temperature. Uh, and there is also a maintenance temperature function. So in cooling, if you don't want to stress uh, uh, in a hot summer the heat pump, uh, you want to maintain uh, your uh, buffer tank uh, that will never go uh, uh, below, uh, above a certain temperature, then you can do that by setting this uh, function. Here is how the uh, control interface will look like. Uh, so uh, for the buffer tank and uh, uh, you can see the, the, the target temperature, which is the actual the temperature that the, we are trying to dictate to the, to the buffer based on the modulation uh, logic. And here are the three different mode, uh, heating and cooling loads, fixed temperature or outdoor compensation. And uh, uh, then there will be this uh, delta T in heating and cooling. So basically, uh, those are the delta T, in this case, is six degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it would be like three, two degrees. Uh, uh, basically, if you need, uh, let's say, 10 degrees in the buffer tank, uh, then you would be asking the heat pump uh, uh, most likely to produce at eight degrees. Uh, so this is the delta T for uh, cooling. Heat pump controls. Uh, so there are uh, different way to control uh, a heat pump. Uh, um, here with the uh, water where we, uh, we decided to go with the second uh, uh, possibility, which is the Modbus uh, strategy. So we, the, the Ritter <coughs> heat pump will be integrated in our control via Modbus. Uh, so that means that we can uh, communicate with the heat pump and uh, we can dictate to the heat pump what temperature we want based on the buffer tank uh, and that delta T that I was showing you. And uh, um, the <coughs> obviously the modulating temperature is only available uh, through the Modbus. Uh, otherwise, uh, will be a, a digital output activation on off heating and cooling at fixed temperature. So this is an enormous advantage, uh, you know, controlling the, the, the heat pump in, in via Modbus because we can modulate not only the temperature on the buffer tank but also the temperature of the heat pump, and that allows us to do both in heating and cooling uh, quite a bit of saving and increasing the COP of the heat pump. We can control uh, uh, heat pump uh, in uh, single stages, so one heat pump or two heat pumps uh, in, in, in parallel, or uh, we also have like a multi-stage uh, uh, strategy, so for uh, bigger residential uh, uh, houses, uh, you can attach two, uh, maybe three heat pump, and then we stage. So. Um, we will be uh, activating maybe all three heat pump uh, to get to the set point and then modulating down. Uh, and then we can reset the array of, uh, of heat pump so that uh, uh, each heat pump can do uh, 
first or second or third stage, and uh, you don't always have the same income doing the first stage. Um, we can also uh, control uh, a backup for heating. Uh, that can be a boiler or electric uh, backup. And this is uh, in particular uh, very useful if uh, you do domestic hot water with a heat pump and uh, also for the uh, anti-legionella treatment, so killing the legionella uh, bacteria. This is uh, uh, the anti-legionella treatment uh, is basically uh, based on three different uh, levels, three different criteria that are uh, based on uh, temperature and uh, for how long uh, the temperature is hold. Uh, and those are uh, uh, three criteria that will kill the legionella uh, uh, bacteria. And those can be done uh, uh, every week or every month. I think here in, uh, in New Zealand is required to be uh, uh, weekly. And uh, in case the system doesn't uh, uh, make the anti-legionella cycle, doesn't make it, then it will try the day after. And if it doesn't, if it fails, then it throws an alarm, and uh, uh, you can see uh, on your app that uh, the anti-legionella didn't go through. And uh, uh, I think Waterwell has the strategies of also adding a manual uh, um, uh, electric heater to go and manually uh, do the treatment and do hot water as a backup. This is how the domestic hot uh, water control uh, looks like in the in the app. Uh, you can uh, s see the domestic at water temperature, you set the set point. Uh, there is also logic for a recirculation pump uh, that can go based on uh, the temperature that we measure on the pipe, or uh, you can have like a, a, a schedule. And uh, so you can say, I just want domestic at water or uh, uh, keeping the recirculating pump uh, only in the morning and in the evening. And so it's, it's very flexible and uh, So um, one of the uh, key of a uh, uh, radian uh, system is uh, the uh, is the hydronic uh, system, hydronic loop. Uh, so with hydronic system, we we mean a loop that uh, will spill the water from the buffer tank, and uh, so we can handle uh, multiple hydronic systems. So uh, as I was showing before, uh, you can have. Uh, an hydronic floor on uh, on a loop, uh, and it's independent. Uh, and then you have uh, your radiant ceiling, and maybe the radiant floor can be like a fixed temperature, maybe. Uh, radiant ceiling uh, with the modulation valve, so with a three-way valve that we set the temperature, and then maybe we have a, an hydronic uh, circuit for, uh, for the fan coil that will spill the, the coolest water for the system. And uh, maybe you can have uh, like a high temperature uh, uh, loop for radiators or uh, tower warmer and also like a dedicated uh, hydronic loop for uh, uh, the air treatment unit. So basically, uh, it's, uh, it's a platform with uh, multiple hydronic system. And uh, so this is an example of uh, the hydronic system. Uh, the for, uh, in this case, it's a fan coil uh, loop. And uh, you can see, you know, orange or blue, you can see what the uh, heating and cooling mode uh, of that loop is. And uh, you can see the supply and return temperature. And one common component of any hydronic loop will be the, the pump. So you need to have a recirculator uh, for per loop. Uh, you can set on the loop a maximum or minimum temperature. So let's say we are doing a radiant floor and we have some wood on the floor. and. Uh, we don't want the temperature to go above uh, um, 40 degrees. Then you set the maximum temperature to 40, and then you know that uh, that loop will never go over 40. And then same for uh, as a minimum temperature. And here uh, uh, um, you will see what are the uh, room or the element that are uh, attached to this uh, specific uh, hydronic system. In particular, uh, one of the hydronic systems, the most uh, uh, com common one is the variable temperature uh, hydronic system. And how do we do that? We do that with uh, using a, a three-way valve. Um, um, <coughs> this will be done with the cassette that uh, uh, Darren was showing you. The Calepi already has the, the three-way valve, three valve integrated. 
Uh, this allows us to do uh, supply temperature modulation, and uh, it has many advantages. Uh, not only for it, it is mandatory for cooling. For cooling, we really want to have uh, a control uh, uh, of the temperature uh, for uh, you know critical dew point management. But uh, there are many other benefits also in in eating. Like for example, we can do like a soft start of uh, of the system uh, to avoid the the creaking of the pipe, uh, so we will uh, gently increase the temperature and we can do that because we have uh, evolved to do it. Strategies for uh, uh, condensation protection. Uh, so um, we have uh, mandatory for radiant cooling, uh, especially if you do on the ceiling and you want to push the performance, uh, we said we want a three-way valve and we want to adjust the temperature of the supply in our hydronic system. So now the question is, uh, what temperature do we want to supply uh, our, uh, our system? And uh, so this temperature uh, basically depend on this uh, delta TR, which is the thermal resistance correction. And as I already anticipated, uh, so the performance of a radiant cooling system really depend uh, on the thermal mass. And I'll show you why. Um, so if this is our uh, panel in the ceiling, and uh, so this is the EPS, uh, here are the pipes, and here uh, is the aluminum transfer plate, and here is the, the, the gypsum layer. So let's say we have a temperature uh, here, uh, a, a dew point in the room that is, uh, let's say, uh, 18 Celsius. So if we have 18 Celsius uh, here, uh, uh, and if we want to be really close to the dew point, let's say 18, 18 Celsius, that means that uh, in the pipe, uh, uh, we most likely can go up to whatever is the, the delta T in the gypsum, that is about five degrees, so 18 minus five, 13 degrees. So we could potentially push 13 degrees into the system and get uh, uh, um, 17 degrees uh, on the surface and we're very close to dew point. Do we want to do that? No, we need to keep a safety distance. And so this delta, uh, thi this reaction factor here is the safety distance. So this part is the thermal correction based on this delta T and this uh, safety factor here is uh, uh, based on how fast can we change the temperature in the city. So if we get very close to the, to the temperature and something happen, and uh, like let's say we open a window in the, in the master bedroom and uh, uh, some humidity gets in, the dew point goes up. So if we are just only one degree difference, we could actually crash. So uh, we want to keep the distance based on how fast we can react. So it's like similar racing a car like if you have like a nice uh, Ferrari, low mass car, you can stay very close to the car in front of you. And uh, if you're driving a truck, then uh, you, the, you wanna keep like a long safety distance so that if you apply the brakes, then you have time to brake. Same thing here. So the safety factor is based on the thermal mass. Uh, if you do it on the floor, um, you could drive the temperature of the floor very close to the dew point, but then if you need to break, then it would take too much time. So the delta TRF, uh, the re reaction factor of the floor is much higher. So this is why the floor is not a good candidate to do effectively radiant cooling. There are other reasons, like also comfort. You don't want to drive the floor too cold because it might actually be uncomfortable, especially if you're sitting and uh, for a long time uh, so uh, radiant cooling uh, uh, on the ceiling is uh, much more effective. Okay, um, saying that, uh, radiant cooling is a really good technology and uh, when I started this uh, um, venture, we were actually seeing uh, the hydronic fan coil as the enemy. Uh, no, no, we do radiant cooling, only cooling on the ceiling. Uh, soon we realized, especially in the US, where we have really demanding clients and uh, they really want low temperature, 
So we said, so why don't actually we become friends with uh, funk oil? And we started to integrate the funk oil in our systems, and we did it in a very smart way. So we used the funk oil uh, as a supplement. So uh, if you, especially in cooling, but also in eating, if you are far from the, from the set point, then we can get the funk oil to help us to reach the target, uh, the set point, uh, by uh, getting the funk oil to go full speed. And then uh, when we get closer to the, to the set point, then we dial down, so we modulate the, the speed of the fan and uh, uh, we, to the point that then the fan coil will be off and then we maintain the temperature with the, with the, radian, uh, with the radian ceiling, if needed. If it's not needed, then if the ceiling is actually keeping up with the cooling laws, then it's only radian uh, uh, doing the job. And uh, we uh, integrate with different uh, uh, fan coil. Uh, we do multi-duct uh, zoning control with dampers. Uh, we also have like three-speed uh, fan coil uh, or uh, uh, what we really like is the fan speed uh, modulation. And fan coil uh, typically are used as a second stage, so as a supplement to the radiant floor or the radiant ceiling for both heating and cooling, but can also be like in some room, you can actually also add the fan coil, no radiant, and that's also doable. This is how the fan coil uh, interface uh, looks like. You can set uh, the, uh, the fan coil in manual, set the speed. You can uh, use the fan coil in manual. If you have a modulation fan coil, you can set the temperature, the, 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 the voltage, uh, let's say uh, from two volt to eight, so 20, 80%. And so you will be modulating between these two max, so you can set up your maximum speed because you don't want to see too much noise on the fan coil and maybe you limit to the 80%. Uh, speaking of fan coil uh, and becoming friend with fan coil, uh, we partnership with uh, Yaga, it's a Belgium company that does uh, fan coil. And uh, uh, so we integrated their fan coil very well in with our control system. Uh, and um, these fan coils are uh, actually low voltage, 24 uh, BDC, uh, and uh, they are very compact, ductless. Uh, mm, waterware will be bringing the same product here uh, in, uh, in, uh, in New Zealand. These are a few examples, uh, the Brisa 12, and uh, the Brisa 22, uh, those are uh, uh, fan coil that can be, the Brisa 12 is ductless, the Brisa 22 can be either duct or ductless, and you can see here they, they drop the ceiling and then they, there is this opening. Uh, it's really one of a kind ductless design. Uh, we really like it as a <coughs> complement to our uh, uh, radiant products. Uh, another <coughs> nice uh, uh, fan coil that they offer is this ductless solution is a trench that goes on the floor with a nice, uh, uh, nice screen. The last ingredient in uh, the radiant cooling recipe is uh, uh, controlling the air. In particular, what do, we what do we want to control? We want to control the humidity. And why is that? Um, well, not to prevent the condensation, because condensation is prevented by doing a good job with the control system, but if, if the humidity is, is elevated, then we have a problem because we cannot drop the temperature of the ceiling. So uh, in this case, we can activate uh, a dehumidification system and, uh, and then we can uh, drop the, the dew point temperature and then will allow us to drop the temperature in the panel. And uh, that means getting more BTU from our panel and using more the panel versus the, the fan coil if are, uh, if are available. So we develop a, a, a ATU, uh, it's, it's an air treatment unit, and the unit uh, integrates with, uh, with our control and there are different functionalities. So the first one, uh, which is the basic, uh, uh, and the reason why we started to look into the air treatment is controlling the humidity. But uh, uh, we also incorporate a, a coil, uh, a, a heat exchanger, so you can do either uh, ERV or uh, HRV uh, mechanical ventilation. And uh, there is also inside the unit a coil, 
and uh, we use this coil uh, for uh, uh, as an element uh, to do the the, um, uh, the humidification, but also to treat the air so that we can uh, uh, condition the air. So let's say it's cold outside and we get in cold air. So yes, there is a, a heat exchanger, but sometimes it's not enough. So with the with the coil that is connected to the same hydronic uh, uh, system, we can treat uh, the air and get it close to be neutral with the room. In the summer, and we can actually also use this coil as a fan coil, so as a supplement uh, cooling system. And uh, in particular, there is also a function, like a recirculation function, so when the humidity is getting uh, a little bit out of control, so we can close the door from outside and then just recirculate uh, the air and, uh, and do control of the, of the humidity. This is how the dashboard will look like in, uh, in, the, um, in the app uh, for the air treatment unit. So you can uh, turn the unit on and off. You can uh, uh, see the, there is a dashboard to uh, see what the unit is doing, what the supply temperature is, what are the room attached to the unit. You can set the HRV airflow setting between like minimum and maximum and do like a, a remote uh, a calibration of the HRV. Okay. <coughs> then uh, you can set up the airflow settings. Uh, you can uh, uh, do the heat recovery ventilation with or without using the, the, the heat pump. So heat recovery ventilation only using the coil or if you want to pre-treat the air, then we will uh, uh, use the, the, the heat pump to uh, produce uh, hot water or cold water for the coil. Every single functionality, uh, heat recovery, ventilation, dehumidification, and, and so on, can be put under a schedule. So you can say, I want to do uh, heat recovery, ventilation only on uh, the evening and in the morning, and I want to avoid uh, the peak hour uh, for energy reasons, so I don't want to bring uh, humid air uh, in, uh, and so you can put everything under uh, under a schedule. Uh, the heat recovery ventilation can be done uh, based on uh, uh, um, set point, uh, like uh, uh, the actual uh, uh, um, uh, air quality set point, and uh, so basically. Uh, because we have the, um, the VOC uh, reading in every single room, uh, we can decide what is the minimum of uh, equivalent CO2 that we want to allow into the room. And if the, if the VOC goes uh, above those uh, reading, then we can activate the, uh, the, mechanical, uh, the mechanical ventilation. This can allow us to do uh, a lot of saving because uh, uh, sometimes we just run the the, 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 the mechanical ventilation without the reason because the air quality is, is high or sometimes actually the air quality is bad outside. So uh, we can play with that. There is also a dirty filter uh, function so that will uh, uh, measure the active uh, uh, filter uh, uh, working time and send a, uh, on the interface uh, an alarm uh, for uh, uh, changing the filter. Here is how the, <coughs> the Messana app will look like we look like uh, here in the center is the main uh, main dashboard uh, showing uh, uh, outdoor condition and uh, um, then you're going to click here you're going to my zones and it's very simple uh, it's based on uh, uh, just uh, actual temperature and this is the, uh, the the temperature the operative temperature not the air temperature this is the set point I'm sorry it's all in Fahrenheit and uh, this is the relative uh, humidity, and then here you can see in each room what is happening. So there is the HRV working in this one. In the lobby, there is uh, the radiant ceiling that is working, and there is also a supplemental fan coil that is uh, doing something there. And uh, uh, here in black, there is uh, what we call the macro zones. So for example, if we have a house with two floor, we can divide uh, uh, create two macro zones, one for the second floor, one for the first floor, or living room space and, uh, and uh, night uh, space, uh, so that we can do multiple uh, uh, settings uh, uh, on the macro zone level. And uh, on this side, we, uh, um, we have uh, uh, 
the, the main menu, uh, system power, then there are some settings here we can uh, set all the system, uh, heat pump, uh, hydronic, uh, si all the menu that I was showing you before are uh, here under system. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to tell you is the heating and cooling changeover strategies. So um, we have been uh, experiencing something uh, very particular, uh, uh, at least in California, but it looks like it's happening here too. Uh, most of our uh, IN client clients come from a, a VRF system. Beautiful, you can have your own uh, cassette in the room and each room is independent and then you can set uh, your set point and then the cassette will do heating and cooling, simple. Unfortunately, hydronic, uh, it's uh, not like that because we only have one heat pump. So unless you do a four pipe system uh, where you can actually have the same uh, thing but it's uh, uh, quite expensive, uh, with a two pipe system we have a, a few limitations and uh, that created uh, a little bit of uh, uh, um, uh, uncomfort uh, uh, to our clients uh, uh, and so we needed to get smart and we started to develop a, a few strategies for uh, uh, heating and cooling changeover. The philosophy is that uh, I don't think uh, the whole house needs uh, uh, to have a, at the same time a heating and, and a cooling but what would be smart to do is to be able to switch from heating to cooling when it's needed. So. We implemented uh, different technology to do that. Uh, one is uh, having the system in uh, manual mode, so either in heating or in cooling. And then uh, uh, in addition to this manual mode, there is what we call uh, uh, adaptive comfort. It's a function that uh, if you are in heating and uh, let's say you have some solar gain and there is the sun up and uh, uh, well, uh, if you are in cooling and you have some solar, uh, I was right. Uh, you are in heating and there is some uh, solar gain and the, the house will uh, start uh, uh, warming up. And so it might create the condition that the system recognizes by reading the temperature in each zone and depending on the setting, it decides to, okay, there is a cooling loads, the switch temporary in cooling, address the cooling loads, and then I will switch back in, in heating. So to the user, it's, uh, uh, it's all transparent. Uh, and part of uh, the Messana philosophy is also no thermostat. And uh, yes, there are some solutions, some old people really want to have the thermostat, uh, but uh, we prefer not to. And so uh, that's why we have an app and we try to set the app in a way that uh, uh, setting and forget it. So uh, we do things in the background and the user doesn't even know. The less he knows, the less it touches, the better it is. And um, <clears throat> so going back to uh, uh, the heating and cooling changeover, uh, another strategy is to have automatic heating and cooling changeover setting. So basically, it's like a democracy. So each room will vote for uh, heating or cooling. And uh, so this is actually good uh, to set the system this way uh, in uh, shoulder season. So the, the system will decide to go to heating, to go to cooling, based on uh, the actual uh, uh, heating and cooling demand. And, and uh, then obviously we also have a, an automatic uh, system with four pipes and so that will actually act like a traditional uh, uh, VRF system. There is a nice uh, uh, graphic uh, um, uh, option, so you can, uh, uh, you can build graphic and see uh, the temperature during the day. Uh, as an installer, you can go really deep and do some troubleshooting and see uh, temperature in the mixing valve, in the supply, in the buffer tank, uh, in the heat pump, something is not working. So you can customize a graph and really understand, uh, oh, so the heat pump is probably mounted uh, 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 not properly or is not working or the pump is, so all uh, uh, um, troubleshooting that can be done using the graph uh, platform. Uh, here I have uh, just uh, a few slides that shows you some uh, uh, installation. This is the Armani Museum uh, in Milan in Italy. And uh, you can see here uh, on the ceiling, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are some uh, um, tile, uh, the three magic uh, uh, panels. Very tall ceiling. This is a house uh, in People Beach. Uh, it's the one that I was showing you, the, uh, the ceiling in, uh, in cooling with, the, with the, <coughs> the, the wood on the ceiling. 
mechanical room and here is the Messana M box and those are zoning modules and this is the M display. Very typical in California uh, getting to net zero. Uh, so having a house that uh, uh, is net zero means uh, uh, putting uh, like a PV grid on the on the on the ceiling on the ceiling on the mm, on the roof, and uh, uh, we do a lot of this kind of installation. So controlling the heat pump and uh, uh, PV on the roof. This is a house in uh, in in Auckland here in. Uh, uh, in, in New Zealand. Uh, I think this was the first house that we did uh, with the waterware. And here is uh, how the ceiling looks like uh, during, the, during the installation. This is another house in, in Auckland. This is a house in, uh, in, in Palo Alto in California. Uh, Atherton, California, another very high-end uh, client. This is a VP in Google. Um, here is a picture of uh, um, the Yaga fan coils. Beautiful house in, uh, in Palo Alto. This is a, a, an estate. Uh, so this house has many rooms and many uh, hydraulic systems. I think there are six different hydraulic systems here. So there is one uh, uh, dedicated just for the uh, air unit. I think there are four air units. This is how the house looks like and these are all picture uh, when we were still doing the panel on the ceiling that panel was coming with the drywall the drywall was laser engraved and uh, Ohio, california a french provincial uh, uh, house still the old uh, technology and uh, this is my last uh, slide so i'm getting close to the end uh, I just want to highlight uh, a few achievements uh, that uh, uh, we reached as Messana. So, uh, definitely worldwide pioneer uh, in the radiant cooling technology, not just in the US, but I would say in the world. Uh, we educated uh, hundreds of uh, HVAC uh, engineers and HVAC installer, uh, and we busted the meat uh, uh, heat races. Uh, it's, uh, it's hot hair races. Uh, um, we do radiant and uh, it really doesn't care. So it's just uh, radiation. And uh, so we demonstrated uh, that you can do uh, radiant cooling in a safe way, uh, condensation free, and uh, the key is the control platform. And uh, so speaking of, we developed the first hydronic uh, fully customizable and uh, modular control platform, which is the M-Control. Uh, thank you. And, uh, if you have any questions, to clear, <laughs> ready to do some radiant cooling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything for uh, Sandra? No. The what? Tax, forty years. I mean, the only element, uh, I mean, it's like technically maintenance free. It's just a way to put the packs in your house. So uh, what dictate the life expectancy would be the... Yeah, uh, well, uh, it's very simple. Uh, you just open, you, you do an opening in the, in the gypsum, and then uh, there is a fitting, like a coupler, and then you, you just fix it which actually very good question and, and it's in my opinion an advantage of doing radiant on the ceiling because if it happens on the ceiling and uh, you will see right away and uh, and if it happens on the floor uh, you, you know it might stay for here and it's dropping down and you don't even know it yeah. <laughs> any other questions <laughs>